Okay guys, well, we're back at it again, and uh, we're going to clean these points up. Actually, let's see if the points are even opening and closing. That could be a, a good thing to see. Um, being that we have lost the electric start and the ability to rotate the engine, uh, the only way we're going to be able to bring these up on top dead end or top dead center is to uh, turn the bottom end. So let's see if we can actually rotate the crank via the uh, prop. See how that works. No turny there. Let's throw it in gear one way or the other. Yeah, I think we got some rotation. <clears throat> You let me know if those points open up because I'm kind of down here. Maybe I can just kick it over. What do you think? Yeah, the points look like they're open. Let's get a light in there and see. Yeah, we definitely have openness. Yeah, they're rolling. And close them. Here they are opening again. And that's about the top. Let's get a piece of sandpaper in there and see if we can clean those up. So we got a little piece of emery in here, a little piece of sandpaper, rip off a chunk, fold it over a couple times, take and Give these things a little, little cleaning up. You guys see any of that? I guess you can. Okay. Now that blue coil, we've decided I'm pretty sure it's going into this one, which is the plug wire that we have it in. Let's clean up the boy. These look almost like they're new. That's too bad there. Well, let's clean up the other one too while we're at it. See what we can do with this one.
uh, sanded up the points a little bit, cleaned those up a little bit. I have uh, installed the flywheel just to give a quick see if there's anything going on here. And um, I have still got the tester in here. I've hooked the uh, uh, charger uh, uh, battery booster box on here. Give this a try. So I think you guys can see this. Um, I've got a plug jammed in here. Let's see if we get any spark. Let's see what happens. You ready? We got spark on that cylinder, and that should be the. Um, let me see. That should be the blue cylinder. Let's try the purple cylinder. I call it the purple cylinder. This is the one that's screwed up. That has the uh, chunk taken out of it. For poops and giggles, let's see if that crappy old looking thing can actually make spark. Could take it out of gear. Probably turn over easier. Um, I'm not seeing anything. Did you guys see anything on that? I'm seeing that purple one is shot. Which makes sense because, well, it looks pretty bad. So let's take this back off again. Double confirm that that is the bad cylinder or the bad coil get that out of the way let's see if we can get this off without having to put the puller on again I think it will come off without putting the polar on it. There she goes. Usually, usually when you put it on the, uh, you know, you get it off the first time, it comes on an awful lot easier. So, double check what we've done here. This is outer plug wire, the outer plug wire, I'm, ooh. oh we get some rotation there too, that's interesting, you can change your timing I guess by doing that, that should be interesting, not sure how that goes, but well, we got spark to one cylinder. You know what we could do to test this? We could take the meter, stick the meter in here, and touch that to um, the coil wire that's coming out of this, and that should give us continuity. All right? If we can find a meter. So let's see. We've got voltage. I'm going to assume that that's DC voltage, even though it could be AC voltage. Don't know. We can clamp. Actually, we're going to do ohms anyway, so that's right. Let's do ohms. Maybe I can. I'm going to guess this coil goes to, or this side goes to this one. Put that on there. 
I'll put this up here where you guys can see it maybe. You guys see that? Sorta? Okay. Where I can see it too. Oh, look at that. Something going on there. So I'm getting 5.87. If I click it onto this one, I'm still getting something. I still get the same on that coil too. Interesting. I get it there. I get it there. Seems to be the uh, general consensus here. Well, that's better. Maybe I was grounded to the wrong spot. Yeah, I'm still showing. Oh, there we go. Yeah, 5.87. Well, that plan didn't work. I don't want to take this plate off if I don't have to. That would be just silliness. I just want to know if that plug wire is the one that goes into it. I mean, I suppose they could crisscross. I can feel it. But I can't move it. So I can't figure it out that way. Hmm. You'd think. Which one am I in? I'm in... I'm in the upper one here. Which is this one going to the back side so what if I went through the windings maybe that's the trick because I can touch the windings right here I'm not sure which points work which coil. Well, I'm 99% sure that the coil that's probably working is the one that's not broken. So that's that's one way to figure it out. Um, so I still have not found my manual for this motor. I have looked all over the place and I have no idea where it got put. I'm wondering if I might have uh, took it to work to look up some numbers and it's laying at work. It could be. Um, anyway, so another good plus. We have Spark. Uh, we'll continue on in a second or two. Okay, guys. Um, since we're uh, kind of working on the electrical, we do have spark on one side, uh, but I'm pretty sure that coil is clustered. Um, I started looking the rest of the motor over. I just noticed this right here. I don't know if you guys can see, but this is busted off. So, right there. Uh, yeah, you guys can see that. Um, so, um, I think it looks like somebody glued it on there already. There's like some goober, goobery material on here. So I'm thinking somebody has already tried to fix this once. I think that pump, I'm going to look back at this. I might even click a picture of it. And because uh, I think I saw these pumps are very similar pump and it has like a small part in the back that hooks on. Maybe we should, how does that come off there? Just those screws? What do you guys think? Sorry, cutting in front of me. Let's pull that off. Because I saw an aftermarket one of these for like 20 bucks. So let's see what's in here. I have a feeling that it's probably the same. Oh yeah, see that loosened right up nicely. So, I 
It has like a little, a little gasket where it mounts to the block. This gasket looks a lot bigger. So this may be a different style pump. But we'll definitely need that. We'll change out a couple of these fuel lines. There it goes. Yeah. Oops. But, there you go. Let me bring you guys up in here. If I can get you off the stand. See if you guys can see. Yeah, you see that right there? That's the little gaskety thing where it goes in and it must get a draft or a vacuum from down in there. So So, what do you guys think? I think we'll need a new one of those. Maybe we'll get that on order. We'll get a new coil. Let me zoom you out. Get a new coil ordered up for it. And I think I'm going to order one. I don't think I'll order two. Unless I can get a good deal on them. Um, save some money there. Because I know that's 20 bucks, being that it's broke. That's got to be another 20 The carb kit, because you can see the carb looks a little crunchy. That's probably going to be another $20, $25. And hopefully it's not in too bad a shape. It's kind of weird. It looks like an old Tillerson. looks like an HD Tillerson carburetor for the most part. And then all this other contraption put on it. It probably is a Tillerson. Um, looks like an old snowmobile carb. But anyway, guys, uh, that's where we're at right now. Okay, guys, <laughs> I think what we're going to do now is we're going to pull this carburetor off here and uh, get a look-see in there and see how yucky that is. Um, I, by the outside of it, if it looks anything like the inside of it, it's going to be yucky. So... Let's get the fuel line off it. Oof. It's going to be the tight one. She's on there. So, come on, baby. Get that one off there. So, I just want to grab a piece of this fuel line that I have and see if I got to get a smaller fuel line. This might be too big. Yeah. I think we're going to go down to 3 16 instead of a quarter inch. I think eighth inch might be too, too small. Um, so it looks like I need a half inch wrench maybe, might get in there. Let's see if we can get in there. sure how I'm going to get down in here. There is absolutely no space behind that starter. And that starter looks like that. Looks like that could be challenging to get out of there. I really don't. Okay guys, sorry about that. I lost the battery and I lost the video card. So, uh, I'm not sure how far we got in removing this carburetor, but um, I did get this line off. I think I was working on that sometime, maybe the time the video died. Uh, so now we're working on getting this carburetor or this starter off to get to the carburetor. And let's go back now that I can actually see that we're working. Well, remember where this goes, right? Maybe. We'll 
I'll put that bolt back in there. Maybe I'll remember where it goes. Um, seems to be a half inch bolt right there. That could hold something of the starter on there. Because this big cast piece here, you know, that's got to be something. Let's get that out of here. Get the bolt out of there. Looks like I got to take off these two 7 16 maybe this one. Maybe this whole line. Didn't really want to do that. Grab a different screwdriver. Okay, let's get a bigger screwdriver. I think I got the tip broke off on that other one. There we go, that works better. He screws out. Oops. Where'd it go? Did you guys see that? Did you miss it? Well, still another screw in it. Get this fuel line right out of here, or whatever it is. Give it a little spray. Might help it. Oops. Try this size. Ah, that worked better than it has been half working. That out of the way. Now we got to get to these. I'm looking for my ratchet. Found the ratchet, can't find the socket. Gotta be laying there somewhere. There they are. I see them. Maybe. It's a little big, but it'll do for now. Make life a little faster. I could bring down the impact. That's floating around someplace. So, this one's already loose. Washer on that one. Any ideas? Where else am I missing one? Well, there's two, two back in there. That might hold something. Sorry if my head's in the way.
Looks like there's a couple more screws up in here too somewhere. Well, maybe not. At least it's moving. I don't want to drop the screws. That's why I'm trying to hold, hold on to them. So. Oh, okay. It almost works. If it was up a little higher, it would clear the case and it would actually come off. So, oh, maybe we pry on it a little bit. I got a little farther there. there. Precision fit. There. One starter. Ooh. Got to cave it on the bench. Now we can get to that screw. Or bolt. Or whatever the heck you want to call it. I guess it would be called a nut properly. We'll have to get this linkage off. That's kind of a crazy linkage. It's got like a little rubber wheel on it <laughs> that follows the flywheel it must govern it or something and then that hooks over here to a, a, an advancer that spins the um, the plate crazy way too many way too many moving parts why do you need all those moving parts it's a boat motor my god what were you thinking Evan Rude I think that's just plain rude. So in typical Tillerson fashion, you got to loosen the bolts up and then pull the carburetor out and then loosen the bolts up and pull the carburetor out and just keep going back and forth until you get tired. Give up or start swearing. Okay, oh, 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 don't drop it. There is some nasty gooby in the bottom of this thing. Nasty gooby. That's a technical term, gooby. That's boogers, goobers, and everything else in between. Okay. I would say this is a plastic little nublet. That should pop right out. You're prying the proper force to the correct location of the Hoosie Watts. It, it'll pop out. Carbonator. Pretty cool, eh? Should we open it up and see what kind of oosum goosum is in there? I bet there's some pretty stuff. Uh, I think I'll set you up on the bench. We'll do it on the bench instead of over here. Um, so... Okay guys, I got you set up over here on the bench. Let's pull this little guy apart and uh, see what we get. See if it's a savable carb. They probably make a Chinese knockoff for it. They make a Chinese knockoff for everything. So if we had to, we could look down that road what I don't know let's find out three screws look like that's it tap 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 tap, tap. what is there another screw yep look at that little hidden one you guys see that down in there you see where they hit it let me move you over here just a little bit so yeah they they tucked one down in behind this wire clamp this little fuel shutoff solenoid, I assume. Right, right in there. They put a hider in there. So, get that out of there. I think I'm going to set that screw back in here. 
because I'm not sure what's inside that thing. Oh boy, guys, I think you're sliding. I think you're sliding all over the place. Maybe I can bring it over here to you. So, okay, that screws up. Now, maybe. Tapping on it. It's laughing at me. Oh, there she goes. Little separation has occurred. Well, okay guys, here can you see? Get you down in here and put a little light on the subject. What do you think about that float? Try not to rip the gasket here. Okay. The bowl is miraculously clean. There's no white powder. That looks great. But holy crap. Look at the holes. I don't think I've ever seen. Is that like crazy or what? Come here. You guys see this. Get up here. Okay. Check out that ugly looking thing. Holy moly. Is that brass? Is it supposed to be brass? Is that just on it or is it pitted? Wow. That is grody. Yes, sir. That is nasty. I don't even know if I want to. I mean, that's just bad. What's the needle doing? Yeah, the needle. You guys see, I can't get you the light. Too close. Needles not really moving. Actually, maybe it is a little. Oh, yeah, look at that. The needle's moving. So. As gross as that carburetor looks, and as that float, I don't think that thing would float nothing. That is disgusting. Um, we'll have to pull that apart and see if it's even... I mean, there's a lot of gunk in there, too, in that main jet. But we'll put her in the ultrasonic. The main body of the carburetor looks good. I mean, you get down past that, it looks clean-ish. So, maybe, maybe we can save it. Uh, we'll see. As I have removed this long jet from the main control, like you can adjust going down the, going down the ocean. And I have removed the main jet out of the bottom here. That's that jet holder, and here is the main jet out of it. They came out pretty good. I also removed the uh, inlet jet um, seat. So that's all been stripped out. We'll get this gasket out of here. And let's see here. Maybe we'll pull this. I don't know if that's like an automatic choke got to be it's connected over here to a choke plate that's a choke too so we'll try taking that apart getting that out of there and then oh, we got the choke to move yeah I bet that's some kind of automatic choke and um, we'll get that in the old parts washer over here which is getting pretty grungy check that gook out <laughs> what do you think I should stop washing guns in it. Ooh, yeah, but it's still got some green in there. And some uh, uh, automatic transmission fluid floating on the top. But underneath it, I think it's okay. And what's wrong with a little uh, lubrication while you're cleaning, right? Should be good. Um, so I'm going to pull this part off, I think. And, because uh, I don't even know how that comes apart or if it should come apart I don't know yeah I'm gonna clamp you 
someplace. The clampy thing is working pretty good on the camera. Just, I still have to find places to put you. Okay guys, I got you in a spot where you're not tipping over now. Hopefully that works. I know I put that screw back in, I'm going to take it back out. At least we'll have video record of how this goes back together because you know me and my memory ain't so good. Uh, interesting. Kind of fun looking thing, isn't it? Look at all the, all the goober. Oh, it's like it's even pitted. Yeah, that's hard. Can you guys see that? All that, like right in there, it's pitted. Very weird. Um, see, does that come out of there? This does, sort of, kind of. Well, no, this is connected to something. That little seal comes out. We try to get as much plastic stuff and rubber stuff and gaskety material out of here as I possibly can. Because um, I'll put it in the ultrasonic, which is just soapy right now. Well, there's some oil on top, but that shouldn't affect it too much. But if I end up have to go to the gunk bucket and wash it out in the gunk bucket, then you don't want to have any rubber or plastic because it will eat it. So, Ooh, that popped off. Oh, it's spring loaded too. Oh boy, that's going to be fun. That grabs onto onto that, and uh, that's how you tighten that up, I guess. That'll be fun. Oh, and there's the spring that's holding this little goober in here. If we can get that fished out of there. Okay. So that's where that goes. That clips into that little plastic ring. Um, anything else you guys see needs to come out of it? I think we could take, I doubt I could, I'd have to take the screws out of that to get that out of there and get that off. I think that'll be good. Um, I would have turned the uh, machine on but it's loud and it's annoying so I'm gonna get that going and <laughs> this thing here holy crap can you guys see that that can't be and you can't even move it is it is it on the oh yeah actually maybe it is on the brass Let me just dip it in here for a minute let's take a piece of uh, scotch bright here I'm trying. I'm a rubbing and a scrubbing. Yeah, I think I can actually feel. Oh yeah, this is um, it's not brass. It's um, like a a, a plasticky material or a rub or a wood like I don't know. It's not rubber. It's not plastic. It's solid, it's like cork almost, like a synthetic cork. Crazy. Well, I won't go too hard on this because I already ripped off a chunk right there. Um, I wonder how they even attach that on. Does it just crimp, crimp on there? Looks like it. Weird. I don't think I've seen a fiber float. It's either brass or plastic, but not synthetic cork. I don't even know what to do with that, how to even wash it. Um, but anyway, I, I don't know, should I put it in there? It'll float on top. I don't know what to do with it. Anyway, so I will spare you guys the, uh, the buzz buzz of the machine. I will plug the machine in and get it warming up because it takes forever. And uh, temperature's up. Timer's up, drop it in the pot, screen is already, or the uh, thing is already in there, I don't know, should we drop this in here, not the plastic, 
Get that in there. Screws, I'm not overly concerned about. This thing, I don't think I'm going to drop that in there because that's got a wire in it. It's probably electrical of some sort. Everything else is pretty much external. We can put this in there. Um, we can put some of these needles in there. I know they probably will fall through, but this thing here, I'll put that in there. I don't know what it is. And uh, we'll put this one in there too. Okay. Put the lid on it. Turn it on. Turn the heater on. Come back in a couple hours and see what we got. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and commenting. This will be the third video in this part of uh, tearing this motor apart. I uh, hope you're uh, enjoying them. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.